Today, I'm going to be comparing three popular international shares funds that you can purchase in New Zealand to see which one is the most suitable for you. The three funds that I have chosen includes the Foundation Series US 500 Fund, which you can purchase through InvestNow, the Vanguard International Shares Select Exclusion Index Fund, which you can also purchase through InvestNow, and finally, the Smart Shares US 500 ETF, which you can purchase through InvestNow, but also other platforms such as Sharesies. Now, the reason why I chose these three international funds specifically is because they have some of the lowest management fees and they invest in the international shares. International shares has proven to be some of the highest returning investments over the uh, long term. The stock market. The Foundation Series US 500 funds and the Smart Share US 500 ETF are both invest in the S&P 500, which are the 500 largest company within uh, the US. Vanguard, on the other hand, is a little bit more diversified and is invested in more than 1,000 companies around the world, uh, with around 70% in North America and 30% in uh, other countries. In reality, the uh, companies that they invest in between the Foundation, the Smart Share, and the Vanguard isn't really as different as you may think, since Vanguards invest in many of the uh, S&P 500 companies as well. So they take up quite a large share of the uh, Vanguard index fund. Now let's compare the returns of the three uh, different funds. So first off, we had the Foundation Series US 500 fund. Over the uh, past six months, it has a 20.68% return. Now, because this fund is relatively new and it has only been around for about a little bit more than a year or so, it doesn't actually have a uh, four-year annualized return. So we are only going by the six-month return for now. And at the moment, that six-month six return has been extremely good because the US market has been doing extremely well over the past six months. If we look at the performance for the Vanguard International Shares uh, Exclusion Fund, over the past six months, it's got a return of 19.68%. And over the past year, it has a return of 20.8%. And over the past five years, it has an annualized return of 11.62%. Now let's compare it with the uh, Smart Shares US 500 ETF. Over the past six months, it's got a return of 18.48%. And over the past year, it's got a return of 17.43%. And over the past five years, it's got an annualized return of around 13.07%. In theory, the Foundation Series and the Smart Share should have the same results. But in reality, both the Foundation Series and Smart Shares, uh, they're basically just middlemen uh, buying the US 500 ETF and the differences can be attributed when they exchange currency to actually purchase the US 500. And depending on currency fluctuations, you may get slightly different results. Cut out the middle. The main point that I want to emphasize here is that I don't really see a significant difference between the three funds in terms of pure returns. Now, in terms of diversification, uh, the Vanguard fund invests in a significantly higher number of companies. So it should be a more diversified fund and less subject to uh, fluctuations of different companies. Diversification. Which also means that it could potentially have slightly lower return when compared to just the US 500 fund. Now let's take a look at the fees for the three different funds. So for the Foundation US 500 fund, there is an annual fee of 0.03%, which is one of the lowest fees when it comes to a managed fund. However, it does have an entry fee of 0.5% and also an exit fee of 0.5%. Now, this means that if you are planning on buying and selling at some point in the future, uh, the total cost would be 1% of what you put in. Now, this can get pretty significant uh, if you have a large amount invested. The Vanguard Exclusion Fund has a management fee of 0.2% per annum, and they have a buy and sell spread of 0.7% for buying and 0.07% for selling. So compared to the Foundation Series Fund, the Vanguard Fund has a significantly lower buying and selling costs. 
The SmartShares US 500 uh, ETF has a annual fund charge of 0.34%. Now, they weren't particularly specific with their buy and sell spread in their uh, investment document since you are basically investing and buying and selling an ETF on the market. So there'll be uh, fluctuating buy and sell spreads. However, we can kind of estimate the uh, buy and sell spread to be around 0.05%. So now we can plot the estimated returns into a spreadsheet. So let's say we have a starting investment of $1,000 and we have an annual return of 10% over a 10 year period of time for the Foundation Series US 500 fund. Uh, we could roughly estimate that we're going to get a return of $2,328 after the 10 years. And with the Vanguard Shares Occlusion Fund, we'll get a return of 2,335. And for the smart shares, we'll get a return of $2,290. This means that if we look at the free funds purely from a return standpoint, uh, the Vanguard gives the highest return, followed by the foundation series, followed by smart shares. But in reality, it's not as simple as that because we still need to take into account of taxes. So now let's compare the tax structures of the three different funds. The Foundation US 500 is a multi-rate PIE fund. Now this means that you're charged at your prescribed investor rate. In order to calculate your prescribed investor's rate, you need to answer some very simple questions. So the first question is, is in one of the last two tax years, is your taxable income less than $14,000? And if the answer is yes, the second question is, is your taxable income plus your PI income from your investments less than $48,000? The answer is also yes. Your prescribed investor's rate is 10.5%. On the other hand, if your total taxable income is greater than $14,000, but less than $48,000 and your combined um, PI income is less than $70,000, you'd have a prescribed investor rate of 17.5%. For the last possible tax bracket, if your total taxable income is greater than $14,000 and is also greater than $48,000, your prescribed investor rate is 28%. Now, realistically, the only thing that you really need to look at is your total taxable income, unless you have a huge amount that you have invested in some pie investments. Now, for most people that are working in full time, most likely your prescribed investor rate uh, is going to be 28% because for most people working in full time, uh, they would get more than $48,000 uh, in taxable income. On the other hand, Vanguard is a foreign investment fund, which means that if you have less than $50,000 invested in your foreign investment, you only get charged your personal tax rate on your dividends. Now to look up your personal tax rate, go out to the IRD website and look those up. If you have greater than $50,000 in your foreign investment, you may be subjected to the FIA tax rules. Now you can look that up or ask your accountant. I'm not going to go into further details in this particular video. Smart share funds are all listed as a PI fund, which means that they're all charged at the 28% uh, rate. Now, this means that if you have a tax rate that's lower than 28%, you may be able to get some tax refunds. Again, you probably want to consult your accountant on that. So what exactly does all of this mean? Now, if you are in a high tax bracket, and by high tax bracket, I mean 30% or more, and you've got lots to invest, like let's say more than $100,000, you might get some tax benefits in investing in the foundation series, uh, where the fee is generally less if you're investing for a period of time that's five years or longer. Foundation series is also a good option if you don't like to deal with foreign taxes. On the other hand, if you don't have a lot to invest or you are in a lower tax bracket, or if you don't want to invest for a significant period of time, 
And by that, I mean probably like five to 10 years or more. The Vanguard Exclusion Fund may be a better option for you because it has a lower buy and sell spread, which means that you can sell out of your investments uh, without being stunned by a very high entry and exit fees. When comparing the three options, SmartShare ends up having the lowest return while having the highest fees. So they're probably not the best option for you.